Now, calls for China to revalue its currency, the renminbi, intensified with comments from IMF Managing Director Dominic Strauss-Kahn overnight. When you have a more domestic-led growth model, you want to fight inflation. Uh, you want to need more to give more uh, purchasing power to uh, your consumers, and this goes along with uh, higher value of the renminbi. So I'm not expecting that it's going to happen overnight. But I think that's the medium-term strategy that uh, uh, I would advise the Chinese authority to follow, and I think they will follow, not because I'm advising it, but because it's in their own uh, interest. Now, less conciliatory comments from U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham overnight. Graham saying U.S. legislation aimed at stopping China from manipulating its currency by slapping duties on Chinese goods would get overwhelming support in the U.S. Senate. Graham, who is co-author of that bill, also said that while he understood the Obama administration's reluctance to push China, time is running out, and that he will attempt to get a vote on the bill this year. Joanna Chua is still with us, Chief Economist, Asia Pack at City, live from up in Hong Kong. Joanna, what is the city's position on this? Well, city's position is we do expect the renminbi revaluation will happen fairly soon in the next couple of months, uh, and that would hopefully help uh, cool political temperatures between U.S. and Washington, uh, or U.S. and China. Okay, uh, let's get more, a little bit more specific. I mean, the consensus is half time by about uh, the middle of this year, widening the band first. Right now, we're plus minus what half a percent could blow out to to double, ooh, one percent plus minus, and then a gradual creeping appreciation. Does that sound about right? Yes. Yeah, that sounds about right. We're expecting an initial perhaps 1% appreciation and then a move to a crawling basket, uh, to a crawling peg to an undisclosed basket, perhaps appreciating by about maybe 3 to 4% within 12 months. Joanna, gradual pace of appreciation is what the Chinese authorities have made very clear. That's their agenda. But isn't there an expectation gap between what the Chinese are prepared to offer and what the U.S. wants to see? I mean, clearly they want to see a more aggressive moves by China. See, I think, you know, obviously bilateral trade between U.S. and China is very important. Um, the fact that China would move and symbolically towards greater ch uh, currency flexibility would probably be a welcome move uh, even among U.S. counterparts. And I don't think anybody is expecting a very dramatic move on the renminbi, which could have obviously very strong negative impact on, on the Chinese economy. So I think, you know, a compromise solution of a gradual move should be welcomed, uh, you know, to a certain extent. But will that be enough for all polit politicians in the U.S.? I'm sure some will want more. But at least that should help uh, you know, reduce some of the political pressures uh, you know, coming from Washington. What about the pressure domestically, Joanna? Because the last set of data, quarterly uh, economic numbers, told us that inflation seemed to be relatively benign for now. But do you see the trend picking up in terms of price pressures? Is that going to be a factor that will force uh, the Chinese authorities to move sooner rather than later? No, absolutely. I mean, we had a pretty Goldilocks scenario in the first quarter. Very strong GDP growth, but inflation was about at 2.4 percent. However, it's clear that liquidity conditions in China still remain very loose. Um, output gaps are narrowing. And as you can see recently, there's increasing concern about asset prices, particularly property. And that's being addressed by more regulatory measures. I think going forward, we are expecting that headline inflation will continue to head higher uh, going into the second half of this year, um, given that you know, the economy is fairly strong. Alongside also, commodity prices are also gradually moving higher as well. You know, Joanna, there's this perception that the Chinese uh, uh, you know, ruling structure is this giant monolith, but there's probably more dissension and debate than, than we like to, to think or even know about. But, I mean, something as big as this would have, would have to be, the, I mean, the last uh, reporting station would have to be the state council. Is it at that level? And have they made a decision, do you think? No, absolutely. Uh, I mean, everything has to be a sort of high-level decision. And, you know, we've, had, we've been focusing on the renminbi move for quite a long time now. This issue has been, you know, talked about since uh, late last year. So that's telling you that consensus building, you know, takes a while, and that's why this, this process is taking a little bit longer. But I think we're now at a critical juncture in the next couple of months where some move has to happen uh, in order to, you know, per perhaps, you know, it's in the best interest of China, at the same time should help avert any further risk of any protectionist backlash from the U.S. So I think I think we, you know, that, you know it, it's already been going on for so long. This debate has been going on, and I think it's going to happen fairly, you know, that the, a decision will, will happen in the next couple of months. All right. We'll be listening out and closely following this. Joanna, always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for the time.